the truth about Chris Paul, fueling the number one seed in the West to their first playoff appearance in 11 seasons, this isn't the first time Paul's instantly turned a team into contenders. Maybe he's never won a title, but you're about to see why CP3 is in the best position to take home his first ring in 2021, and stay tuned to see whether or not the point guard's case for MVP has any life. Only 12.1% of you watching this video right now are subscribed, so if you're looking for consistent NBA hot takes, you came to the right place. Quick commenter shout out to Zach, who says it's been fun watching the Wizards finally click, and as a fan, he appreciates Russ. Great answer, Zach. The question for next video's post intro shout out is coming up. No matter how talented the roster around him is, Chris Paul launches the franchise he's playing for up the standings. We'll get to how Devin Booker and the rest of the Suns' young core are a big reason for the team sitting pretty with the league's best record, but no one's had more of an impact on that than the future Hall of Famer, CP3. When you look at the 35-year-old's proven impact throughout the years, it's clear that he has a golden touch because every team he joins turns into a contender. So before getting into how he's going off in his 16th campaign with the Phoenix Suns in 2021, we first quickly have to go over the instant impact he's had throughout his career. In 0405, the New Orleans Pelicans were dead last in their division, but after drafting the Wake Forest product in Chris Paul, they won 20 more games in 06, and they were a 56-win team by Paul's third season, and they ended up getting one win from the conference finals. In 2010-11, the Clippers were number 13 in their conference, but the addition of the point god boosted them to the number 5 seed in 2012, and by Paul's second season there, they were leading their division. CP3 took the Clips from irrelevancy into Lob City. His addition made the Clippers the kings of LA for a short period of time, and perennial contenders. I know the Rockets won 55 games in 2016-17 before he got there, however, they won 65, the highest total in franchise history, in Chris Paul's first year with the team. Houston went from third in the West to leading the Western Conference. The Rockets also went from losing in the semifinals to coming just one win short of being in the NBA Finals. More on Paul's tenure in H-Town is coming up, but after GM Daryl Morey was let go, Paul was traded to OKC, and it wasn't about how he improved his team's win total this time, but the 2019-20 season saw Paul turn the Thunder into the biggest overachievers in the NBA. Oklahoma City entered the year with a 0.2% chance to make the playoffs. I projected them to be dead last in their conference before the year, but instead, Paul carried a team that was destined for the top of the draft lottery to the fourth best record in the West. And against his former team in the playoffs, the Thunder got one shot away from reaching the second round. An inexperienced, quote, rebuilding OKC squad no longer lost every close game like they did in the previous season. Paul, who was snubbed from the All-NBA team since 2016, was rightfully given a second team selection. He led the league in clutch points with 150, as well as clutch minutes with 168, and he shot 52.2% from the floor in clutch situations. But the Thunder were trying to tank, they moved Chris Paul, and that leads us to where we are now. CP3's been the most important addition to the Phoenix Suns franchise in a long time, following a path previously blazed by Charles Barkley in 1993 and Steve Nash in 2005, by immediately playing like an MVP while pushing the team to one of the league's best records in the regular season. Last year, the Suns were sitting at 26 wins entering the bubble, but they went on a magical 8-0 run in Orlando, but came up just short of the playoffs. Then, in the shortest offseason of all time, Phoenix only had to give up Kelly Oubre, Ricky Rubio, and one single first-round pick to acquire CP3, and the moves paid off to say the least. This year, Phoenix already has 45 wins, and as of this recording, they have the best record in the NBA. Additionally, the 16-year veteran and shot-creating artist in Paul has taught the young Suns how to close out games, which is something they really struggled with last year. They were 16-21 and 21 in games that were within five points in the last five minutes. This year, they're 14-11 and 11 in those games, and Phoenix's monster win over the Clippers on Wednesday night which clinched the Suns their first playoff berth since 2010, Chris Paul posted his 215th career game with 20 points and 10 assists, 
which ties Isaiah Thomas for fifth most in NBA history. Only Oscar Robertson, Magic Johnson, LeBron James, and Russell Westbrook have more. To gain the number one seed, the Suns took down the Jazz in a blowout win, and it was their third win over Utah this year, and the second time they beat the Jazz by double digits. In this game, the Utah Jazz didn't have two of their top players in Conley and D. Mitch, but Devin Booker dropped 31 points on 13 of 19 shooting in that game, and Phoenix is gonna have the tiebreaker if these two teams have identical records at season's end. From CP3's pick and roll connection with the third year center and former number one pick DeAndre Ayton, to his increasing chemistry with his backcourt partner in Devin Booker, and the overall depth of this Suns roster, this may be Paul's best chance to win a title. Playoff D-Book is something we've yet to witness, and I'm expecting the 24-year-old to break out into a bona fide superstar when the postseason hits. Here's what a ton of people disregard about the Phoenix Suns. It's their defensive trio on the perimeter of Jay Crowder, who's actually out right now, combined with Tory Craig and Mikhail Bridges. That's going to help Phoenix defend the best wings in basketball. Devin Booker's also improving on this end, but given he has two bulky yet swift lockdown defenders next to him in Crowder and Craig, and even though Mikhail Bridges isn't bulky, he's a 3 and D player who specializes on his hustle on this end, and he has a 7 foot 1 wingspan at only 6 foot 6. So if they match up with an LA team in the playoffs, there's some versatile wings Phoenix can throw at a player like Kawhi, PG, or LeBron. I could dedicate a separate video to the impressive core of the 2021 Suns, but on to the next segment. Before showing you if CP3 can win the MVP, here's who Chris Paul is proving wrong with his performance this year. Back when he signed the very four-year contract that expires after this season, initially he signed that four-year $150 million deal with the Rockets. And according to Paul himself, he moved 15 people with him to Houston, including his wife, his kids, and his brother and wife, and their kids, cousins, the nanny, the trainer, the masseuse, security people, the chef. But less than two years into his deal, the season after the Rockets came up five wins short of an NBA title, Houston had enough of CP3. It was the same thing with the Oklahoma City Thunder as exactly 16 months after bringing him to OKC, Thunder GM Sam Presti worked with Paul on a trade to Phoenix, where Paul would join a foundering, dysfunctional organization, but one with intriguing up-and-comers nonetheless. Paul's always been the scapegoat because of his reputation for being a locker room disruptance. Former teammates like Blake Griffin and many others haven't put up with Paul's stubborn, seemingly know-it-all temperament, because throughout his whole career, Chris has shown little patience for those who don't pay attention to the details that he thinks separate winning from losing and doesn't hold back about expressing his displeasure. He doesn't have that problem in Phoenix though. Everyone looks at him like the NBA legend that he is, and they're driven by his hunger to win. This could be CP3's best chance to win a title, and this is definitely the Sun's window given Paul's entering his late 30s. In terms of his potential to win MVP, I think he'll definitely get a few votes, but as of right now, Nikola Jokic is the front runner, and it'll likely be impossible to catch him, and rightfully so because Jokic is the most valuable player in every advanced stat. But in terms of how he leads and inspires his young teammates, there's no one that's been more valuable than the Suns Hall of Famer CP3. Last year, he shot 50% from deep in the clutch during the playoffs. This year, he's got D. Book doing a lot of shot manufacturing down the stretch, but Paul's still number seven in clutch scoring. The reason Paul is one of the most reliable players in the last minutes of games is how he can dice up defenders with shifty dribble combos on the perimeter and fade away from the mid-range as well as anyone in basketball. What makes up for his lack of size is his combination of speed, ball handling, and passing awareness in the pick and roll. For next video shout out, let me know if you think CP3's a legit MVP candidate in the comments section. This was DFlow. Have a great day, and I'll see you next video.